Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. In this video, I'll be continuing the discussion surrounding the consequences for the potential for a vote of no confidence in Boris Johnson's leadership, maybe as early as next week. The pressure's certainly on, but not just Johnson. If Tory rebels mess this up, they are in a heap of trouble. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So a few sources are suggesting that the number of letters required to trigger a confidence vote in Johnson's leadership has already been reached and that Sir Graham Brady, the custodian of the letters, is waiting until Parliament is back next week to announce it. Now, I don't know how reliable these reports are. After all, very few people can really know. Uh, but there is good reason to believe that the number could certainly be close by next week unless some Tory MPs withdraw their letters. Because if the target of 54 letters is reached, that means a confidence vote. Boris Johnson has been reported to be ringing around Tory MPs to offer them promotions if they withdraw their letter and reaffirm their support for him. Boris Do Johnson doesn't just not want to lose a confidence vote. He doesn't want the vote taking place at all. Because here's the thing. We have no idea how that vote would go. There are some who think he'd probably win it. But the first thing to bear in mind is that it's a secret ballot. So everyone is free to vote as they please. Even ministers, even cabinet ministers, could vote against Johnson free in the knowledge that nobody would ever find out. It's only submitting letters that carries a risk. This is because even if you submit them in secret, the senior members of the 1922 committee of Tory backbench MPs will still know it was you. The confidence vote itself is the only way to vote against Johnson and be guaranteed anonymity. And it's thought that over half of MPs are now satisfied that Johnson is going to cost them the next election. But that's not certain. There are plenty of MPs who feel that Johnson won them their seat or at least increased their majority from a tight win to a comfortable one so they owe him their loyalty. There are others who look around and don't see an obvious successor. Even MPs who feel that there is a better option have to be wary. There's no guarantee that their pick would be chosen. They could end up with someone who is, from their point of view, worse. Consider the case of Red Wall Tory MPs, for example. These are the most critical of Johnson's failure because they are the most likely to lose their seats if the polls do not pick up for them. But they also know that if Johnson is replaced by a more traditional Tory leader, they may well abandon any pretense of the levelling up strategy that is their only hope of retaining those seats at the next election. Because here's the thing, those red wall Tories know that Labour are going to be fighting them very hard and at the moment they're not likely to win them. It's all very messy. So the reality is there may well be a majority of Tory MPs who feel that Johnson should be given more time to turn things around. So Boris Johnson could sneak a win in the confidence vote. And if the confidence vote has to go ahead, it's in Johnson's interest that it goes ahead quickly. The last thing he wants is for it to take place after the by-elections in a few weeks. Because right now, Tories are expecting to lose both those by-elections, but they could lose them badly. They might not lose them at all. I mean, let's not take anything for granted. But the probability is that they're lost and that they could be lost very badly. And if they are lost very badly, then more Tory MPs may doubt Johnson and could vote against him. Whereas at the moment, they may imagine that it'll be a tight contest or they might just lose them. So Johnson has a better chance with a vote next week than at the end of the month. But even a tight victory is not a win for Johnson. So let's say he wins the confidence vote, but only just. It'll prove to everyone that just under half the party don't have confidence in his leadership. The fact that there aren't any obvious successes around only makes it worse, really, because it means that if there were a credible alternative, he would definitely have lost. Boris Johnson will have had his authority completely shattered. Opposition parties and the public would see a Prime Minister who only has the confidence of about half his parliamentary party, which is not much more than a quarter of MPs in the House of Commons. Rebellions, which have already been a thorn in his side of late, may grow larger and bolder. Now, consider what happened when Theresa May won her confidence vote, 2018. She won by 200 votes to 117, so she won 63% of the votes. Now, you consider what happened to her leadership afterwards. Her authority was fatally shot. And it was a slow decline, a slow puncture, until half a year later she was forced out. Now, in theory, she was protected by party rules for a full year. 
but senior backbenchers told her that if she didn't go, they would change the rules. Now they could do the same to Johnson, who might not win anywhere near 63% of the vote. Of course, in Johnson's case, you get the impression that they may actually have to change those rules, that he may not go just because they say he's going, they're going to. Could be messy, especially if, as I talked about earlier this week, there's an urgent need to get rid of him at some time this autumn. If, for example, we run a course of events, which is perfectly credible, whereby he ends up being recalled from Parliament as a result of the Privileges Committee investigation, I could be very messy. But I already described that sequence of events. You could watch the video from earlier this week. The general danger for Conservatives and for Johnson is a narrow win for the Prime Minister. For Johnson, the damage is obvious. He can never again claim to have his party behind him. He may try and claim it, but there will be official numbers which say otherwise. It's not just bad for Johnson, but the Conservatives as well. So consider the public mood right now. They're not happy with Boris Johnson. So badly are they unhappy with him that the party is about to lose a safe seat in Devon and one of their new red wall seats in the north of England. Now consider how the public would react to a confidence vote in Johnson's leadership. They'll be thinking, oh, we're finally going to get rid of him. And then they find he actually wins it. The damage that would do to the party's image could be fatal. Even if they get rid of Johnson later on, depending on the circumstances, it might not even lessen public mistrust of the party. It would be better for the confidence vote not to happen at all than to happen for, and, and for Johnson to win, for the Tory rebels. Because at least then it never happened at all. Uh, Tory MPs could continue to blame Johnson to their constituents for the problems in anticipation of getting rid of him later on more tidily. The stakes here are fairly huge. But from my point of view, a win-win situation. Because I look at this purely politically now. Forget about the fact that Boris Johnson is the worst Prime Minister this country may ever have had. That does not mean that his replacement will definitely be better. The grim reality is there are worse potential candidates waiting in the wings. Even if Johnson is replaced by someone better, which is not a given, the party is not suddenly going to start being honest about either Covid or Brexit, much less anything else. They're not going to start looking after the general population. The Conservative Party under any leader is still there to look after the interests of the incredibly rich and to squeeze the rest of us as much as possible. So politically, the best outcome for someone like me is that the confidence vote goes ahead, but that Johnson wins by a small margin. Preferably 52%. That would be hilarious. Let's see him proclaim that he represents the will of the Tory party with a straight face then. This is the best outcome for opponents of the Conservatives because it inflicts the most damage. It means his authority is fatally weakened. He'll be facing the conclusion of the Privileges Committee investigation just as he goes to the Tory party conference. The public mood will not have improved as, as you know, this will be the time when the cost of living will be jacked up again. We're talking late September, early October here. It should also coincide with the introduction of biometric checks at the Brexit borders. You know, Johnson could keep kicking that can down the road, but he's just storing up a whole heap of trouble all at once by doing so. And so too are the Conservatives. In fact, I've seen a suggestion that some Tory MPs think that Boris Johnson might even call a general election if this happens, a way to reset his authority within the party. Because that would allow him to do what he did for the last uh, general election, purge a load of the rebels, say, you're not standing as a Conservative candidate, you know, withdraw the whip, whatever. Commit himself to that. If he wins, he confirms to his party that he is an election winning machine. He gets newer candidates in who will, who will have their parliamentary knowledge reset. It probably helps him to have a lot of very inexperienced MPs. You know, and then he's set again. His authority is re-established. If he loses, and he may not even... He may actually be too arrogant to even believe that he could lose. But if he does lose, if he's conscious of the fact he might lose, he hasn't really lost anything because his power would be shot anyway if he only just wins a vote of no confidence. He knows what happens to Theresa May. He was the one rubbing his hands in glee as it happened. But maybe they will get rid of him. Maybe enough Tory MPs can look ahead at October and decide they want no part of it. Perhaps they can even win the by-election in Devon if they've made the decision to get rid of him and Tory voters flock back. That would then give them a boost. I don't rule out the fact that if Boris Johnson loses, he might still call a general election as well. That would be interesting, you know, as a, uh, as a form of mutually assured destruction. We might get a general election come what may out of this. 
But, you know, in theory, if that didn't happen, uh, even that is not a bad outcome for me politically, because it means we get to see the Tory party splitting along factional lines as they push for their pick for replacement. Because remember, they're not going to get behind a common compromise candidate. I don't think there is a compromise candidate. So that means one person has to emerge victorious and then they can continue at each other's throats when they almost inevitably go for a divisive new leader. You know, but maybe it's worth considering how Tory MPs will approach the vote in the context of who's available to take uh, tomorrow. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button, maybe even click on the join button if you're interested in memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.